Hi everybody, so if you think about it in a certain way, wind turbines by their very nature are inspired by nature. Their designs and concepts are pulled from the world around them to optimise their efficiency, reduce their impact and improve the energy that they produce. The turbines mirror the form and function of things around them in order to perform their function better and better. So biomimicry or inspiration from nature is ingrained in what turbines actually are. And of course nature serves as a treasure trove of designs for engineers to look at, trying to replicate the efficiency and the elegance of forms found in nature. Biomimicry in wind turbines revolves around imitating shapes, structures and behaviours observed in nature's aerodynamic wonders. Of course, birds with their innate ability to navigate wind currents have long inspired wind turbine designs, and some blades incorporate features from the bird's wing, altering the blade shape and reducing disturbance in the blade path and improving efficiency. The swaying motion of trees in the wind has influenced flexible turbine designs that can adapt to changing wind conditions. Mimicking tree flexibility, these turbines can withstand strong gusts without sustaining damage and thereby ensure longevity and stability. The unique fins of whales, optimised for hydrodynamic efficiency, have inspired turbine designs with smoother edges and curved shapes. These adaptations reduce drag and noise, enhance turbine performance and minimise disturbances to the surrounding ecosystems. There are four main benefits of biomimetic wind turbines. Enhanced efficiency, reduced environmental impact, improved adaptability and noise reduction. Of course, despite the promises of biomimetic wind turbines, challenges are there. Replicating intricate natural designs into functional scalable turbines while maintaining cost effectiveness is a serious hurdle. And of course there's rigorous testing and validation which are crucial to ensuring the efficacy and safety of innovative designs. But the future does hold promise. Ongoing research in biomimicry coupled with advancements in materials science and engineering continues to push the boundaries of what wind turbines are capable of. New collaborations between biologists, engineers and renewable energy experts foster this innovation and driving the evolution of nature-inspired turbines. And this was sent to me by a friend of mine and it was a, a website, I'm oh, sorry, a YouTube channel of a Finnish artist called Simon Grippenberg. He's got about a thousand subscribers he gets a couple of hundred views per video. But I had a look at this video and, and it was about a frenet heater being wind driven. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's a fascinating idea. But I also had a look at his channel. And um, he does some awesome stuff actually. It's one of those things that you kind of have to dig around on YouTube because there's <laughs> quite a lot of junk on YouTube, quite a lot of false information, quite a lot of scams and quite a lot of clickbait. But there is some brilliant information if you have a dig around. Now I didn't dig around from it, my friend did, okay? Um, but I went to this Simon Gruppenberg's channel, had a look at a couple of wind turbine designs that he's got that kind of hit a note with me. And this one particularly I liked. And I thought I'd give that a go at replicating it. So what I've come up with is a stick with a bit of wood on it. This stick has got um, this circle of wood and in there I've drilled straight through two holes. That hole goes straight through to that hole and then 90 degrees exactly the same thing and I've got a couple of bits of this. This is fiberglass rod and the rod can go straight in there and swivel around the same axis and that's going to be important. Then I've taken some aluminium sheet and bend it over because that will then glue on to that rod like that. That goes in there and then the other piece goes on at 90 degrees. So it's at 90 degrees like that. So I'm going to get that built. There we go. That's what one blade looks like on these two. They're free to swivel on each other. Okay, so that's it mocked up. Now, the blades are like that. You see it's 90 degrees or like that, it's 90 degrees. And we've got them offset against each other and they're fixed on the same axle. So I think the idea, as it turns, that gets hit by the wind and presents that surface and it gets pushed as it's doing that, this one is levered up to present the least amount of surface so we don't have much drag on here and we get a bit of push on there. 
I think that's the idea, okay? And as that one comes around, the same thing happens, and so we get it to rotate. So I've got a fan on it, so that we can see it happen. Now, I think that works that way because it's spinning in that direction. So if it worked the opposite way, we would expect it to spin in the opposite direction, I think. But it's certainly very interesting. We've got a wind speed about 1.5 meters per second there. So I'll put the link to Simon Grippenberg's YouTube channel underneath because he's got quite a few interesting ideas that he says is based on uh, observations of nature. Now we obviously haven't got this connected to a load and, and obviously no real sort of serious testing going on uh, with it but I did like the design, I did like the idea and that, that thinking about pushing it out of the way with this um, swivel on the cross beam there. Those I all thought were really interesting ideas so uh, probably worth to jump over to have a look. I'm certainly going to look at a couple of other Simon's ideas. Um, this one, it works but to what degree it works, I don't really know, but I did like it, so I thought I would share it with you and point out Simon's YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.